New old stock from Harry J. Epstein, because like they say, they just don't make them like they used to. I mean, if you judge my pancreas by that standard, it's just a lie, but still. Hey folks, Wes from Woody Name Woodworking here with an awesome box of new old stock from the Harry J. Epstein Company. Saw an ad a couple days ago on Instagram for some saws and tape measures that they got in stock and had to place an order. Thought you guys might like to come along with me as I open these up and see how they look. It's like opening something on Christmas your mom really overwraps it to make it an undertaking. We'll take a closer look at these. But we got a Stanley Professional back saw. Classic Stanley Nesto saws. HJE sticker. <laughs> I'll have to show this to you. It's a small little tape measure. And this Lufkin purple, so 60s tape measure. Also got some new new stock here. The Modified Square from the Modified Square Company. We'll take a look at that as well. So they call this a hard hat sticker, but I think it goes pretty well on the toolbox also. So when I first saw these tape measures, my assumption was that they probably came from the 60s. If I had to guess, I would have said the mid 60s, maybe the early 60s. But I was thinking I was probably wrong. But the more I've looked online, these might even be from the late 50s or even mid 50s. I found an ad from a hardware retail magazine journal from the late 40s that showed these for sale, or at least tapes from this measure all along. And there's not a great pictorial history of this out there, but it looks like these were common tapes in the 50s and 60s. So let's start with our three footer. Number 143P. It's gorgeous. This chrome on here is so shiny. It's almost to a mirror like finish. A little button here, probably to lock it in place, maybe? Yep, locks it in place. We can let go or push the button and it goes back in. This purple looking at it from this angle, is absolutely lovely. Seriously, it's, it's really, really a nice purple. Um, there's a sentence I don't think I've ever said. Sort of grippy finish here. It's got a nice weight to it, but it's not heavy. But weirdly, holding it, it feels well-made, if that makes sense. This honestly feels like a quality product, just for being this little three-foot tape measure. And honestly, I've held three foot tape measures before and they've all been crap. This is actually like a good thing, it feels like. It feels quality. It's black tape with a silver printing on it, down to sixteenths. Honestly, it's really it stands out. It's lovely. It's really easy to read. This is a great little pocket tape measure. Again, as I mentioned, saw multiples of these from the 40s through the 60s, it appears, with different colors on these. Dave in Saginaw, Michigan, Lufkin. It's gotten the patent numbers there. Pull the tape out. Demarcations on the bottom are to 16 Surprisingly, at the top, you go to 30 seconds, which are somewhat legible on this. This is very easy to read. Honestly, it's really clear. Uh, for the first foot, you've gotten 30 seconds. So no special demarcation for 16, no special demarcation really for 12 other than this change. Chrome clad, it really does stand out very well. This white, well, it almost looks like a little bit whitish gray, not a pure white. Again, the purple here is really lovely on this measure all. So once upon a time, Stanley made some really high quality tools for carpenters and woodworkers to some extent. Now, while a back saw is commonly thought of as more of a woodworker's tool, it was often used by carpenters for cutting trim and things like that. So when you had the old muscle powered miter saw, you would use something like this to cut your trim. Bit heavy, but feels good in the hand. American made, really stiff with this. We'll compare it to this Hultaforge back saw, which is <clears throat> a bit shorter and the teeth are more aggressive 
Now I haven't used this saw a ton, but when I have, I really liked it overall. Uh, much as I do pretty much everything I've gotten from Holtenhorf. And we'll see how they compare to each other. This is probably going to give us a finer, smoother cut while, as this, whereas this will probably be a bit faster. So next we have the Stanley Nest of Saws, sort of keyhole saws. So three blades and the handle. So obviously this isn't necessarily going to be the best saw you've ever used. It's really meant to fill in a couple of places. And this comes from the era when a carpenter or woodworker, specifically a carpenter, this is really aimed at a carpenter or maybe a homeowner, but a carpenter would have carried this to cover unexpected weird needs. Cutting through drywall, cutting through plywood, cutting off random stuff that they didn't want to get out their really good saw for. Obviously you didn't necessarily have a really great saw for this kind of stuff where you're trying to cut circles, but utility, this is the case where you don't necessarily want to get out that nice cross-cut saw. To an extent, a multi-tool takes care of this today, but not totally so. Something like this would still have utility in certain contexts. This is probably the tool more of a trim or finish carpenter than it is a framing carpenter. Though again, probably not going to see a lot of use for this in this day and age. Last little thing I wanted to mention here was this modified square. I'm not really going to go over how to use it. I'll link to the video where the guy who invented it actually shows how to use it because Certainly, I'm not going to be able to do it at the level he does, but I think it's an interesting little invention, and I'm going to use it around the shop here for some projects. Now, if I'm really blown away by it or disappointed in it, I'll let you guys know. Alrighty, folks, that was some new old stock from Harry J. Epstein Company. Let me know what you thought of the tools, and in the comments, let me know if you guys have ever picked up any new old stock. Have you got anything new that was from the 40s, 50s, 60s, etc.? If so, how did it work out for you? Did you actually end up using it a lot? Or did it end up becoming more of a cool little historical piece to have around the shop or in your toolkit? Of course, as always, I'd love for you guys to do the YouTube things of like and subscribe. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.